really excited about the level of government regulator that we have. So we've always had this conference in, in Washington, D.C. because it's very easy to get, it's easier, I should say, to get government officials to speak when it's right down the street from where they work. So for this year, uh, this year's agenda is highlighted by, uh, we, we're going to have a uh, an open conversation style uh, session, keynote session with SEC commissioners Allison Heron Lee and Hester Peirce. That was Dave Lee Fort, Managing Director at Compliance Week. In this podcast, we take a deep dive into Compliance Week 2022 National Conference, some of the highlights, and why you should attend this first conference since the pandemic. The FCPA Compliance Report is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and today I have with me a special edition. I have with me Compliance Week Managing Director Dave Leefort, and we are going to take a deep dive into Compliance Week 2022. Dave, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Thank you, Tom. I'm glad to be here, and I'll be extra glad to see you in a few weeks uh, at the National Conference. Dave, I think we're both equally excited about Compliance Week 2022 this year. Obviously, it's the first full compliance conference in uh, over two years because of the pandemic. But as, as significant as that is, you've got just a chock full of outstanding uh, speakers uh, lined up to talk. You've got uh, corporations with uh, really the depth and breadth of American business coming uh, to attend the conference. Uh, we've got a, a huge slate of vendors who have uh, lots of new things to show us for the first time in a couple of years. So uh, I wanted to maybe start with uh, the keynotes because you seem to me to sure. really go out of your way to bring in the literally the top regulators and uh, to can give solid information to the compliance community in a way we typically don't get because we don't get to hear those folks. So I wonder if you might be able to start with that. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we are less than, you know, as we tape this on April 28th, we are less than three weeks away from the start of the conference. So we're, we are in full, uh, full planning mode. We're just dotting our last I's, crossing our last T's. Delegate sales are still open. Uh, so there's still time, uh, we are filling up the exhibit area. We've had to expand that twice to fit the number of uh, exhibitors that we uh, that we want to uh, that we want to be able to showcase. And uh, I don't know. We're just overall super excited. But as you mentioned, the I'm really excited about the level of government regulator that we have. So we've always had this conference in in Washington D.C. because it's very easy to get. It's easier, I should say, to get government officials to speak when it's right down the street from where they work. So for this year, uh, this year's agenda is highlighted by uh, we, we're going to have a uh, an open conversation style uh, session, keynote session with SEC commissioners Allison Heron Lee and Hester Peirce. So and, and Lee in particular, she announced she was leaving the SEC, I think, in June. Uh, so this might be one of the last times she speaks uh, publicly or speaks to, it'd be the last time she speaks to this audience anyway, this audience of, of compliance practitioners. And, you know, they've got a ton to talk about between the, the latest uh, ESG proposed uh, climate related disclosures. I mean, that's, that's top of mind for everybody. Uh, and that's, that's across our agenda. We are, we already know that both that Lee and purse have, uh, diff- much different viewpoints on that. Um, you have one commissioner who believe who's who's fully in favor, along with the uh, chairman uh, Gary Gensler of uh, at, of these disclosures, and they, they want to to make this information uh, about how a company is impacting the environment. They want to make that transparent to investors, to all stakeholders. Whereas you know the other commissioner is. Uh, a little bit uh, wary of the validity of the data, so it'll be fun to hear to hear them talk about that, among other things. Um, also on the agenda for that day is a keynote with uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney General uh, Kenneth Polite. Um, he is the head of the Criminal Division of the DOJ, 
So he, he and his team are responsible for maintaining the, uh, the DOJ's evaluation of corporate compliance program. Uh, so uh, you better believe he'll be talking about that in particular. That's under, undergone um, a few changes over the last few years. And uh, I believe he will be speaking on that topic um, during his session. Now, he's also uniquely qualified to address this audience because he's a former chief compliance officer himself. So, uh, so that will be, uh, that'll be one, that's one that I'm really looking forward to. Um, we also have from, uh, from OFAC, uh, in the treasury, uh, Lawrence, uh, Shiner, sorry. Um, he's the associate director of compliance and enforcement at treasury, uh, at the at OFAC, excuse me. Um, so he'll be talking, uh, on day three as part of a panel on navigating international sanctions. And of course, you know, the thing that's top of mind in terms of sanctions is, uh, is Russia. Um, so, so in the thing about this panel in particular is it's going to be closed to the media. Uh, so this is a practitioner's only session. So only the people in the room, uh, will be getting, um, uh, his pearls of wisdom. Um, so not even compliance week will be able to cover that. So we've, we've agreed to, uh, to not record that session. Um, so anyway, it's, it's just, you know, and those are just three, there are, uh, there are a few more uh, regulators on the agenda. We've got a, a U.S. attorney from New Jersey, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so we are very privileged to be to, to get this level of, uh, of regulator. And we're privileged to be in D.C. And we're privileged to be able to hold this event in person for the first time in three years. The COVID numbers, again, are going down, and you better believe I look at DC numbers on a daily basis. Um, and uh, for the record, they dropped three percent over the over the last week. So, uh, so yeah, we're 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 super excited about all of it. Dave, it's not listed as a keynote, but frankly, for me, it's a keynote, and that's a fireside chat where Mary Inman is going to interview John Kerry, you author of Bad Blood, Wall Street Journal reporter who broke the Theranos story. I was wondering if you could tell us uh, a, a few words about, about that uh, particular presentation, because I, I really view that as a true highlight for me. Yeah, that, it, it's going to be great to hear uh, to hear John talk about Theranos. And in particular, you know, he's uh, he also covered the Elizabeth Holmes trial. Now, that, that sentencing hasn't happened yet. And, you know, it'll be interesting to get his take on what he thinks a fair a fair sentence might be, and what he thinks of how, about how the trial played out in particular. Um, and there's also, you know, there's still a lot to unpack of from the Elizabeth Holmes story itself. Like there's a there's a Showtime dramatization that is uh, that's currently playing out. There's a there's been a I think at least one or two documentaries produced about it. This is this, this the Theranos story is this generation's. Um, uh, Enron um, for for this generation of, of compliance as the cautionary tale, the 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 level of widespread fraud and how intentional it was to keep certain functions and certain certain people siloed uh, is just it's incredibly fascinating, but it's also a uh, a true cautionary tale of how this this kind of thing can actually happen. Um, you've got a, an entire board of directors at, at Theranos that Elizabeth Holmes had essentially wrapped around her finger. You know, they, they would ask questions that, that would probe at certain, uh, you know, lack of data from, from Elizabeth Holmes. And she would sort of just, she was able to just uh, shrug it off and the, the board would go along with it because of the potential that they saw in her and in the company in what she promised that they could do. And, you know, as you had mentioned, John Kerry was the one who uh, blew the lid off the whole thing, uh, thanks to the help of a whistleblower. And even that, even his personal story about how Theranos fought him over this. I mean, they sicked, you know, all of their lawyers uh, on him and the journal. And so I'm sure he'll talk about that as well, what that experience was like for him. Um, so, so yeah, there is, there's definitely a lot more to, to unpack with that. Dave, you've got uh, a number of panels at Compliance Week, and I'm really not going to ask you to go into the specific panels because we're doing that in another podcast series, but you've got a couple of other 
uh, presentations that I really wanted to highlight. And the first is workshops. And these are opportunities for compliance professionals or other attendees to literally take a deep dive into uh, specific practice areas. So I was wondering if you could maybe uh, talk about the overall structure of the workshops and how that's going to benefit uh, the, the compliance professional, the chief compliance officer, or those who are dealing with this in their companies? Yeah, so, so the workshops, this is something new that we're trying this year. We hadn't done the, we haven't made, we've, we've done pre-conference workshops before. However, these works, and those were always separate admission items. This, the, these workshops are actually part of the conference. So on day one, the conference actually kicks off uh, with these workshops. So at, so at between 1 and 4 p.m., so it's a three-hour workshop with a networking break in the middle uh, and, a, and a lunch just before it. And we, we're doing four deep dives, okay? So, so there's, there's one deep dive on compliance's role in ESG and corporate social responsibility. So that's, that is something that is incredibly top, top of mind. And, you know, there, there's one on managing... Uh, the uh, how to build the right training program for your business. There's one on a, a quantitative data-driven approach to measuring the effectiveness of your compliance program. And then there's one on navigating the global regulatory environment. So you choose one of those four sessions and what you get is it's not a lecture. It's not a, uh, there's nobody that's going to be dictating information to you. It is, it is a collaborative uh, I mean, a collaborative workshop session where there will be facilitators in the room, there will be subject matter experts in the room, but the idea is going to be for everybody to participate. So this is very, is, this is, these are meant to be highly participatory workshops where you, you can learn from each other, but in a more structured environment. So we all know that the, you know, a lot of networking happens at cocktail hours and post-event dinners and at coffee breaks in the middle of, of conferences. But these are sort of intentional networking and collaboration opportunities built into the conference as uh, on very specific topics. So you're already with uh, alongside people, practitioners who are who have the same concerns as you. And they're battling the same, they're trying to solve the same problems as you are. Uh, so we're really excited about these workshops because this is, we've never done this type of format as part of a, as part of the regular conference agenda. So we thought this was the right way to kick off the conference this year because people haven't had the opportunity to, to network in the same room for, you know, close to three years now. And we thought this would set the right tone right off the bat. And I think the, the topics that we've nailed down here navigating sanctions, uh, how to measure the effectiveness of your program, how to, uh, what is the right way to train your employees, and uh, what is compliance's role in ESG, and what should compliance's role be in ESG. Those are, our, we, we, we chose those topics intentionally because those are where our, our research showed that practitioners more than anything else need and want answers for We'll be right back with more from Dave Leefort on Compliance Week 2022 after this message from our sponsor. Dave, you've also got a presentation or a series of presentations, rather, that are entitled Conversation rooms. And you have, I believe, four separate rooms set up. Could you describe what this uh, is? Sure. So so these conversation rooms are, they're you, first off, they're unique uh, to, so any of all of our other events, they don't include this, but conversation rooms are small boardroom type setup. So picture a, a boardroom with a horseshoe sh- shaped table where you've got 12 to 15 practitioners sitting around the table. It's close to uh, close to vendors, close to consultants, close to the media, so close to Compliance Week staff. And it's essentially a very small room session, again, on a, on a super specific topic where practitioners can gather and, again, share, the, share learnings, uh, share best practices, 
share uh, similar problems that they're trying to solve. And the beauty of these is that they're small, they're intimate, you can get to know new people. So this isn't the, these aren't the same people you're, you're talking to. I mean, I think I can speak for, uh, I guess speak for a lot of people where, you know, I'm in, I'm in Zoom meetings th almost throughout the day and I'm talking to this, mostly the same people. So this is an opportunity to talk with a different group of people. These, these are people who you wouldn't necessarily otherwise get a chance to interact with and to interact with in person. Um, so, I mean, as always, this conference has had uh, one of the best, one of the things that we, that we like to, uh, that we're very proud of about this event is we have attendees and delegates that come from cross industry. So this is not a financial services compliance conference. This is not a healthcare compliance conference. This is not a, uh, a data privacy or a cybersecurity compliance conference. This is cross industry. So we've got representatives from, uh, for example, FedEx, Microsoft, General Electric, Pfizer, uh, GlaxoSmithKline, Lockheed Martin, Pepsi, Cigna, Zoom, Best Buy, Home Depot, TikTok is even here. Uh, so, so in other words, you're getting input and feedback and networking opportunities with a incredibly diverse cross-section of practitioners in a similar role that you're in, but not necessarily in the same industry. So they're going to have different perspectives, but you might have shared challenges that you can learn from each other for. And that's what, that's the purpose of these conversation rooms is to have that small, intimate uh, setting where, uh, where you can sort of network and, and share those and share those things. Dave, um, several of the people I've interviewed who are speaking or presenting at compliance week have said not only uh, that they want to see us, our colleagues, our friends that we haven't physically seen in a couple of years, but they wanted to be able to sit down and interact with vendors, with other compliance professionals, and really take advantage of being in a face-to-face -face situation. So I wanted to use that to introduce or ask, will there be places and spaces where you can sit down and have a cup of coffee and maybe talk to someone? Will there be a, a vendor room with a large or hopefully a large number of vendors, but you know, you, you're not rushed and you get a 30 second pitch, but you can sit down and have a five, 10, 20 minute conversation. This is what I'm looking for. This is what I need. Do you have this? Will they really have the opportunity for those face-to-face -face interactions that we've literally missed for two years. Yeah. And, and you know what? Absolutely. So there's a, there's a whole uh, exhibit hall area that we've actually had to expand two times over the last two months because we've, we've, we've had so many uh, vendors interested in being present and having a booth present and being able to talk to their clients face to face for the first time in three years. So yes, there is a there's an exhibit area that's going to be open for uh, I think twelve hours a day for three straight days, and there are a number of networking opportunities besides that uh, where you can mingle with these uh, with these folks who have products and services to offer that maybe you never even knew you needed. Um, there are you know over the last of course the last two years. Um, there are a number of new challenges that have emerged. And of course, a number of new uh, technology solutions have emerged as well. So uh, I'll bet that people will, will see something that they didn't know what, that even was even existed or a solution that, that wasn't around a couple of years ago. I mean, we've got, you know, one third of our sponsors are sponsoring with Compliance Week for the, for the first time in person. And that's because, for the most part, the companies didn't exist a couple of years ago. So there are a lot of new players in the space. Um, and in addition, the, uh, the vendors will have uh, a session that is specific to, to them and to, their, to what they have to offer. It's called a uh, roundtable session. So on day two, uh, I think it's right before the cocktail hour. So you can, you can get your cocktails a half an hour early. If you go into the uh, the vendor roundtable room, so where you can, there's sort of a it's a speed dating type situation where you can spend 20 minutes at a table and see what each vendor has to offer while you know enjoying a cocktail at the end of the day. So, um, so yes, there will be plenty of networking opportunities with sponsors, but no, again, no pressure either. So it's not 
you know, we, we want to re- retain the, the atmosphere of this is a, a, a practitioner first, a content first uh, environment. So uh, we're very intentional about, you know, where, where the vendors are set up and uh, the availability and where, you know, they're not going to be in your face, but at the same time, there'll be plenty of opportunities to, to interact and see what they have to offer. And Dave, I was wondering if you might be able to give us a sense of the breadth and scope of attendees at uh, the event. And and I, I, I'm aware of it. And really, I see a cross section of U.S. businesses, not limited to any specific industry or even area. So uh, can you tell us about really that, the breadth and scope of those who are going to attend? I, I just listed a bunch of, you know, a bunch of companies that are already Registered, and we've got almost. Uh, I think the tally this morning was was about 450 people that we know are going to be attending. Um, so we've got folks from banking industry. We've got folks from uh, from uh, hedge funds. We have folks from manufacturing, uh, technology companies. Uh, pharma is is heavily represented. Um, some of the biggest companies in the world, companies like Microsoft, companies like uh, FedEx, uh, Best Buy, Home Depot. Uh, Zoom is going to be there. Um, and then, of course, you know, we have representatives from the big four uh, accounting and consulting firms, PwC, EY, Deloitte. Uh, and I'm missing one. I don't know why. Uh, what did I, which one did I miss? KPMG, excuse me. Yes, KPMG. Um, so, yeah, they'll all be there. Um, you know, Western Union, Fannie Mae, Delta. Uh, so it goes across industry. We've got a good representation even from uh, international. So there'll be, I think, 15 percent of our attendees right now that are registered. Again, this is as of April 28th, uh, are come from overseas. So there is while it's primarily uh, North American, there, there are there is a cross section of attendees that are coming from overseas. So you not only get the. Um, the national perspective, you also get the international perspective with that. So Dave, we've got a few minutes left. Uh, what would be the best way for someone to find out more about the conference or really any of the topics you've touched on in this podcast? So I would invite them to go to uh, the conference website. Um, and this year it's, it's complianceweeknational.com. Uh, so it's very simple. Um, we've made it very easy and it's, it's all there uh, on the homepage. Um, where you can see the you can see the brochure, you can you can see the agenda. The and the agenda includes all the speakers and all the topics and all the companies represented. Um, you can and if you if you're registered for the conference, you can actually book. Uh, you can actually pre-register for sessions. So if sessions fill up, um, you're going to want to pre-register for those ones. So any, anything that's outside the general session is um, we're at a little bit of a, of a, of a space crunch. Um, so we're encouraging people to pre-register for sessions. But in any case, if you haven't signed up yet, go to complianceweeknational.com. I know that Tom's going to be giving out a, a special code for a discount. Um, there's still time to sign up. It's April 28th now. The conference starts on May 16th. I just booked my plane ticket from Boston today. It's still cheap. It was less than 300 bucks. Um, so uh, I would encourage you to check out the website there, check out the agenda. You can see what, what, what is there to do around the JW Marriott. It is literally right on the National Mall. Uh, so all of, all of the, uh, it's a great time of year to visit. You can, you know, go for a nice walk at night. You can, you can visit any of the Smithsonian museums. It's a, uh, just a great time. Even the Nationals are in town. So we're talking about going to a Nationals game on Sunday afternoon, the, the Compliance Week staff anyway. Uh, so, uh, it's just a great time to go Astros. Yeah. <laughs> you had to get that in there, didn't you? Yeah. It's a great time to be in DC. Uh, so yeah, please, if you don't know, uh, if you're just learning about the conference for the first time, check out complianceweeknational.com. There's information on how to get in touch with us. There's information on who's speaking and when they're speaking, there's pricing, all of it. So let me just add a lot of the best conversations I've had, Dave, are, um, in the 19th hole. Uh, after the, uh, the, the day's events where lots of people will come in and have a drink uh, either after the conference or after a dinner. But there's lots of great conversations in the bars and the com- common areas, uh, informal conversations, get to know your colleagues, 
Uh, if you have questions, you can throw it out without fear of retribution or attestation and uh, <laughs> get some answers. Yes. Uh, but some of these informal chats are really some of the best times I've had. So uh, you can really take advantage of uh, not simply the wealth of Compliance Week's knowledge, but the wealth of the literally the uh, compliance community uh, on a worldwide basis. So I hope our listeners will, uh, uh, if you haven't signed up yet, uh, I have, and uh, I'm greatly looking forward to it. And I hope if you have not, you'll take a look at this. Uh, the link We're going to link to uh, these sites in the show notes. Take a look, uh, use the discount code, and I hope that, that you will join us in uh, a couple of weeks now, uh, May 16 to 18 in Washington, D.C. for Compliance Week 2022. Yes, and you better believe uh, the bar will be open. So it's called the 1331 Bar and Lounge. It's on the third floor of the JW. Not that I'm keeping track. Not that, not that that's the first place I went to when I visited during the summer. Uh, but yes, it's uh, it's always a great experience. And and you're right. the the post the post day or the post conference um, mingling and just you know relaxing at the bar and having a drink and sharing stories with colleagues is you know it's something that everybody's missed the last two plus years. And it's something that, you know, I'm really looking forward to. I know others are as well. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the FCPA Compliance Report. More importantly, I hope you will plan to join myself and a host of other compliance professionals on May 16 to May 18 in Washington for Compliance Week 2022. Listeners to this podcast have a special discount code, which we've listed in the show notes. This is going to be the first time we have all been able to get together uh, literally since the pandemic. So I hope you will take this opportunity to join me, Dave LaFort, and many, many others at Compliance Week 2022. Hope you'll join me again next week where I have a very interesting interview with Claire Wool Warledge about internal audit, data visualization, and data analytics. The FCPA Compliance Report is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.